Alright, what's up y'all, take a fan here. As we're about to head today's video, here to showcase the number one center build you can make in NBA 2K24 for Comp Pro-Am. Now, this is specifically talking about Comp Pro-Am. I'm not here to talk too much about like the rec center style or anything like that, where you may demand a little bit more interior defense and block than what I'm gonna be showing in today's video. But when I say meta, that obviously breaks it down into the most effective tactics available. That's what it technically means. And what I want to showcase in today's video is taking advantage of some broken factors in this game and applying that to the build that we're going to be showcasing. So I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you do, feel free to drop a like, sub if you're new, turn on notice, all the good stuff. And like always, try to spend 2,000 likes. Now, this video is me trying to get ahead of the game in some cases on other players in the game. Now, to be fair, there are also other centers in the game who have made popper builds that are maybe at the expense of interior defense and block like what I'm showcasing in today's video. But in this sense, it's more implemented into the driving dunk aspect than it is the three point shooting. So as you can see, as far as the physical aspects of the build, it's actually identical to my day one center build that I made, which is seven foot, 246, 710 wingspan. Max wingspan, you know, 246 to be able to get that 90 strength and still keep the 83 vert. Not any thing specifically for the 83 vert but it's a good height weight speed and like strength vertical threshold kind of combo to all meet and as you can see it comes to the accumulation of having 95 pass sack for the touch passer and relay passer on hall of fame as well as also still break starter on hall of fame too and people sleep on the value of these ratings right here most specifically including ball handle as you can see technically ball handle is not too far away from being it's it's literal max i mean we're, we're only a couple attributes up from it but speed with ball is the main one i want to talk about you could end up putting something like speed with ball down to 40 on a build like this or some people even make the grave mistake of putting it even lower than 40 which is stupid if you ask me it's so cheap it's so easy to upgrade as you can see if we apply it to block rating off just the drop of of the speed with ball that we did you get three block back it's like literally one of the best attribute investments you can make on a build like this plus big driver goes up a level it's not like a huge deal but it's still something to kind of pay mind to but the pass sack, ball handle, and speed with ball aspects of the build are very important, very slept on. I think it's obvious that people don't pay much mind to attributes like this when they're building a center, but they forget how cheap this type of stuff can be. Not to mention as well, once again, the main aspect of what we're talking about is the 89 driving dunk of the build. So 89 gives you pro contacts off two and off one. Off two is going to be 87 dunk, 89 is going to be for the off one. 90 standing dunk is going to give you the gold rise up. Not the precision dunker really matters that much, but it is still a factor that you could <laughs> at least to have on the build but 90 standing dunk also gives the elite big man contacts and the contact dunking aspect of the build is what we're here to talk about if you guys have seen the way i've been operating with this build and the pick and roll and the miscellaneous iso that i do from time to time with this build especially if you get other centers matched up on you if you can end up in a situation where the the back end like power forward type builds that have 91 steel to 95 steel are not guarding you and even those, I would debatably say you can still kind of dribble on them if you go ahead and apply some of the things in yesterday's video where it was like the dribble tutorial I had for these seven footers and six tens. That normal dribble style allows you to do a lot of back and forth movement, which is very simple to do. And it's very easy to avoid getting the ball stolen while doing stuff like that. And it, it will allow you to create on power forwards and centers really well in this game. And again, you apply the driving dunk and the standing dunk to it. It works really well. Now, the reason I'm showing you this specifically of the low interior defense, high, low block, but high offensive rebound with that 99 offensive rebound. I, I've seen the way people operate with this 99 O board. It's insane or 99 D board for that matter too. I think you need builds like this on the court, whether it's at the five or the four. Typically what I'm seeing lately is people run 99 offensive rebound fives and then 99 defensive rebound fours. And that's just how they want to go about it. But I even still value the rating being high. So while you may think, oh, well, Laker, even if I were to go to 99, I just want to put my D board to 84, which you can see it does like cut out some attribute points and you can definitely make something shake as far as the stuff goes. But at the same time, you can't even get 87 block doing this. And I don't think personally off all the gameplay that I've played in this game, that block rating and interior defense are extremely important at all. To keep bronze anchor and just enough for silver chase down as well anyway, paired with good vert, you get the Hoff pogo stick and etc. etc. anyway. I think this is a very good level. And I, I'm even underselling it by saying I think it's a very good level. I know it's a very good level. And I've seen a lot of people disagreeing with that in the comments. And you know, people are entitled to their own opinion when it comes to stuff like this. But I would very much so encourage you guys to understand that I would not come to a conclusion like this if it weren't formulated through the fact that I do a lot of dunking. I do a lot of trying to finish with layups and dunks and standing dunks. And, you know, even not that I do a lot of close shot, but I do understand the mechanics of like how this whole interior defense versus finishing works. And what are you valuing as far as interior D or block if it's not to stop dunks 
or layups. I mean, it's literally as simple as that. And one of the main driving factors of why I'm talking about this is my frustration with how the interior defense applies to the driving dunk meter size or the standing dunk meter size. They don't. And I've seen it firsthand off being a dunker in this game. So it's all about positioning. I've seen that firsthand. People even with small guards can get the force you to get the tiny dunk meters. And to, let's be real. The, the one viable, consistent way to dunk the ball in this game is going to be dunk metering. Even though I have given it its flack in the past, it's still extremely effective and very hard to stop if it's the right usage of it and it's in the right positions. And with a build like this, you can absolutely get to those spots. Now, to be fair, there is one revision I would also recommend is which if you aren't really that big, like, you know, stickler on the layups, let's say you like don't really care for this whole silver feelers finisher Hoff pro touch, the Jokic and Sabonis like layup styles and stuff like that. You could just go down to 70. You can also drop your close shot down to 55. If you go any lower than that, though, as you can see, it's going to force your standing dunk down. And, you know, typically in years past, people would criticize me for such low close shot on a build like this. But honestly, in this year's game, the standing dunk meters are so forceful that you don't need even the slightest bit of close shot in my opinion at all i think it's a useless factor i think it's a useless trait you've seen a lot of people who are you who run mashers quote unquote in the past years where they're on like seven twos and seven threes and they try and take advantage of the masher type badges as you can see like this one right here which is like a like a complete forgotten part of the game for me in my opinion i mean it's such a terrible try thing to try and do which is like trying to get pump fake into close shot matches they just don't work in this year's game but what's so superior is the standing dunks now where other people also go wrong on their builds is they do something like this they put their driving dunk to like 70 they completely just disregard this aspect of the build they maybe just want athletic hangs off one which is cool and all if you're like a corner spot up in my opinion playing power forward or small forward or something like that or even like if you want to make it as a point guard with 65 driving dunk or a shooting guard but as a center in my opinion you're limiting yourself so much when you're making a build like this that only has 65 dunk or 70 dunk you're going to be putting yourself in situations where you're going to get kicked out of dunks ripped out of them you're going to get like bad animations that aren't going to be able to you know resist the blocks quite as well and again dunk meter itself really is a huge powerful factor when it comes to the pick and roll game or the mashing as well or even just isoing and going with the the like kind of four out one in you as the slasher iso five out if you will i know it doesn't really make sense when i explain it like that but you as the five out ball handler i'll put it like that even though you can't shoot technically but all of these things included driving dunk is a huge factor not even to mention too if you try and use your standing dunk meter if you're moving in the slightest bit it will use your driving dunk rating to gauge the dunk meter size standing dunk is still going to correlate to just like your standing dunk meter size if you're at a dead standstill but if you're not it's going to use your driving dunk rating to apply that into how big the dunk meter is going to be so I think people completely forget about this and disregard it for very bad reasoning and keeping that pro contact dunk off one package on is so so major when it comes to using this as a pick and roller and in my opinion I think this is a good value to go for that 80 driving lay I think it's actually pretty cheap it gives you the Hoff pro touch which is still going to help you even hit the close shots for that matter and fearless finisher and it's still even something that you can apply to if you're running that ISO or if you want to just use this as a little bit more of a park build hybrid if you will that can still do the Jokic floaters or the Sabonis floaters if you unlock it with starter three so all this included pick and roll game really good break throwing really good you fit you factor in as another offensive option on the court that can still kind of bail your team out if you have nothing to go to and to be real with you guys the efficiency rate on the dunk metering stuff in this game can be extremely lethal if it's in the right hands and honestly with how many guards are just chucking up shots and going four for 14 or four for 15 in games and stuff like that i think builds like this really do bail you out if you were to hit them more often to where you can actually get to those efficient takes as long as you're willing to accept the fact that you may turn the ball over a couple times a game now also alternatively i do want to suggest this to you guys if you want to go ahead and like let's say you wanted something like steel on your build you want that 60 steel rating what you can do is just make these slight revisions that i'm showcasing right here and boom there's a 60 steel for the bronze interceptor you you can just settle with the 70 driving layup take that mid-range and free throw down one I, I i know you're probably wondering why in the world i had 26 mid-range in the first place but it wasn't any better upgrades available to be had but to upgrade my free throw by one more and some people may be skeptical about this part of the build too i had one run that was pretty bad for the free throws but besides that i feel like i've been shooting a pretty good percent you're gonna get them to pop up as like 40 percenters pretty consistently if you time it properly they do go in at a decent rate and you can still green with it as well so i would say expect to shoot about 45 percent from free throw with this build 
build if you end up with a 50 free throw. It's not exactly perfect, but to be fair, it's kind of hard to even still green free throws even if you have it at 80 as well. I'm not saying it's impossible by any means. I'm just saying it's a little bit harder than years past, and it's not so automatic like it used to be. Anyway, me personally, I'm not a big fan of putting steel on the builds, especially if it's this tall and this like kind of used in this way. I don't really care to play for lanes. I would rather just once again play for the good positioning on interior defense, utilize like the speed and and just like wall up positioning or the immovable for enforcer aspect of the build and not play for passing lanes quite as much. I know it may sound kind of, you know, counterintuitive, if you will, if I'm the one telling you guys to just focus on playing good interior defense and go for like good block attempts or good interior D wall ups, but that's the point. It's all about mechanics in this game rather than to, you know, rely on the interior DR block rating to bail you out. So what I'm trying to get at here is I don't suggest to be going for passing lanes so consistently in the first place to the point where I almost just disregard them anyway because I feel like they just get you in more trouble than it's worth. And I would rather have the investment of this driving layup, but that's just me. Some people may not agree or obviously, you know, you're, you're up to your own standards of disagreeing or agreeing, whatever the case may be. But as you can see, it's it's a direct trade-off investment. If you want the 60 steel for the interceptor on bronze, you can go for it. It's just the drop-off of the layup and close shot. Simple as that. But otherwise, you can keep this investment right here. And again, to, to kind of backtrack over to the other topic that is obviously one we haven't talked about too much right here, the 99 offensive rebound can be very, very elite. Like, it's been really crazy. I haven't made a build with this yet, but I've seen constant players on the other end that I'm playing against in this comp pro -am stuff with always 99 offensive rebound on their center. And it is very expensive. Don't get me wrong. I mean, as you can see, to go literally just from a 97 offense rebound to a 99 is going to take you from a 97 overall to a 99 overall. But it's well worth the investment, in my opinion. And then again, to still match it with a decent defensive rebound rating, like a 90, if you will. If you want to go a little bit lower than that, I guess it's okay. But I, I definitely value this type of a rebounding investment. And I think this is one of the most important things in the game, because here's the deal. When you get those O boards, they put you down below the basket in a really efficient place to be going for those standing dunks off the O boards. Like, like you are squared up at the basket straight like that. You grab the O board, you're already standing still when you came down with it. And now you just meter dunk straight like that. And you're typically in a great position with them as well. And same goes for having defense rebound upgraded as well is when the more you control these rebounds as a center, especially dropping off the corner, or if you ended up in the back end defense off a of rotate, or if you just like to play paint on two, three, the more you control the rebounds, the less the other team center has the opportunity to be able to get those types of putbacks attempts and stuff like that. It's very important to control the rebounds, in my opinion, in this game. And then again, when you have a higher D board, it's going to allow you to get more fast breaks. Your guards can reliably run the break more because they know they can depend on you to grab the rebound. And what I'm trying to get at here is rebounding is significantly more important than shot blocking and interior defense when it comes to the rating upgrades. Now, you playing good interior defense and blocking the sh like shots is still important, but I'm here to tell you, you can do it with these types of ratings right here. Bronze Anchor, Silver Chase Down, as long as you pair it with good vertical as well, I am a big believer in it and I've seen it firsthand with my 610 that I recreated with these exact ratings right here. Technically, I had it on 61 interior D, but with the 610, I had more prim D, so I already got workhorse by default. I just decided to go up to 65 interior D here for bronze workhorse. That's the only reason I ended up with it. So anyway, besides that, again, I wanted to keep the acceleration. I think it's still important for featuring as a ball handler and like a third option on offense. If your locks and power forwards are a little bit more of like cones, so to say, they just kind of sit there in the corner and don't do as much. And that's fine. Everybody can, you know, be a PJ Tucker in this game <laughs> if they prefer to be. But most teams are running the, 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 the offense through their point guard, then shooting guard. But then after that, they don't have much of a factor on their offense elsewhere. And the centers are kind of just there to grab offense rebounds and get put back dunks. But I'm here to tell you these slight investments into your ratings. And again, let's go ahead and just take these off real quick and just show you how much of a kind of cone it could be on offense if you don't really have these investments. It doesn't really get you a whole lot more, to be honest with you guys. I'll even drop the pass act to 92. We'll drop the ball handle to 60. I mean, I wouldn't suggest to go any lower than this. I guess some people would make this stupid mistake right here. We can just like simulate it and show you guys what it would look like. But as you can see, if you try and get like, let's say silver anchor, here you are. You could have that investment and it maybe is one that is still potentially worth going for. But as far as the gold anchor, you're still even going to have to pinch a couple more pennies here. We'll, we'll get this maneuver right here. We'll go ahead and take the D board down by one. And then as you can see, you'll be looking at gold anchor, but at the expense of what? I mean, uh, an entire aspect of driving dunk contact dunks. And now you're just kind of a bot that has to hold up on a stick and hope the athletic hangs do you well. And, you know, 10 driving lay, three pass act as well. I think those investments are more important than the factor of anchor and chase down. And I'm here to tell you this because I have the build. I'll show you guys the builds. <laughs> 
So this one right here is the recreated version, whereas this one right here is the original version. You can see they're both 610. They both have pretty much the same wingspan, except one's one weight higher. You know, it was just like this one has hyperdrive, the other one doesn't. Long story short, this one had more block and more interior defense, whereas this, I dropped it down to the like thresholds of bronze. So 61 interior D with 78 block and enough for the silver chase down as well. And then my original center build right here, the seven footer, this build has a pretty high level of investment when it comes to interior defense and block, but I don't even like it personally. I, I regret it as far as like having the upgrades on this for this build. And that's why I'm considering recreating a new one that looks very similar to what I'm showcasing you guys in today's video. So again, with this one, it was like pointless on the whole like interior defense and block. I have 85 interior D with 92 block. It doesn't feel worth in my opinion. I even have gameplay footage between the, all these levels of interior defense if you actually want to just investigate or inspect stuff on my channel as far as you know the investments on that. But as you can see, I even like skimped out on a little bit of acceleration, a little bit of speed with ball. I regret it. I wish I actually upgraded all that stuff all the way and didn't even upgrade my close shot anything past what it gets forced up to. I wish I had the 80 driving layup. It's all the makeups of the build that I have right here that I did originally kind of get right with the fact that I put the 89 driving dunk and the 90 standing dunk and the 95 pass act and the ball handle maxed out and stuff too. Good perimeter D, but I'm like, I don't really go for lanes that very much. Maybe it's just preference on some of this stuff too. And I'm trying to preach my preferences to you guys, but I wish I had more rebounding. I wish I had less steel. I wish I had less blocking into your defense. It feels pretty useless and a very like overrated investment when it comes to your builds. And then I wish I had more driving layup as well with less close shot. I, it's all the recorrections of the build in my opinion that I wish I got things right on. So again, just one last look at this right here because I'm probably going to recreate it and make this build right here for Comp Pro-Am. But this is what we're looking at as far as my preferred investment and in what I think is, is going to be the number one meta Comp Pro-Am center build in 2K24. Now, to be fair, when I say meta, does that mean what everybody's going to run in the game? No, definitely not. Because most people are still going to run the constant bot stuff they've been on where their center is a cone on offense too. All he does is crash offensive rebounds and get meter dunks, standing dunks, and that's it. He doesn't utilize it in the pick and roll game at all. You don't even even have like the great pass accuracy on it or anything like that either and to be fair that's all that really makes this special is the driving dunk being higher but again it's an investment that so many people miss out on they literally will constantly put this driving dunk to 70 just for what to get silver anchor right back out of it and you can't even you still got to go a little bit further investment on that and i just think when you compare that in a direct trade-off of that 19 driving dunk to the about, let's say 10 block and 10 interior defense that we're looking at, not even, it's like seven interior defense. Seven interior D versus, and like, and like nine block versus 19 driving dunk. The driving dunk is much more premium, in my opinion, when you're comparing it straight up, just like that. And again, everything else that we've shown case as well, very important, in my opinion. So. That is our take on the number one center build in 2K24. If you guys have any disagreements, you can feel free to leave them in the comments as well. But obviously I've stated my opinions and it's the video I'm recording on it too. So it's obviously, I'm not gonna budge on my opinions too much just based on the feedback from others. Cause I've already seen a lot of other people who are good at the game playing the game and they operate with builds that are very similar to this when it comes to the investment of the block into your D and offensive rebound, defensive rebound. But not exactly the driving dunk aspect of it. And they maybe invest more into like, let's say shooting as well. But honestly, if you wanna go ahead and take that as an example too, we could go ahead and do that. So like, for instance, if you if you go with something like that, you're not really quite to the investment of where you can end up making a popper build yet either. You're gonna have to sacrifice maybe the pass act a little bit. You're gonna have to sacrifice maybe down to the 93 offensive rebound. If you do that, you're definitely on the right track now. Now you could upgrade your three-pointer all the way and now you're looking good. But <laughs> again, that's where you're, you're talking about the investment of that offensive rebound rating. I think it's actually one of the few things that is very worth going for 99 in this game. Not many others are. I would say steel, maybe let's say three-pointer could be sometimes worth it maybe sometimes in reach but honestly besides that not many 99 ratings are very worth it at all but offensive rebound or defensive rebound are very very justified in my opinion in this game probably either the number one or number two most justified thing to go for after steel and honestly i would say sometimes debatably seeing the way some people play with this 99 steel rating i'd say offense rebound might even be the number one most justified thing to go for i see it very often too i already mentioned in the video that we see like the other team's center constantly come out here with a 99 offense rebound or the number the other team's power forward come out with the 99 defensive rebound it's super consistent so anyway that's all video i hope you all enjoyed if you did feel free to drop a like sub if you new to my notice all good stuff and like always try to win 2000 likes if it's the end of the video put center in the in the comments search portmelly through or you could put pro am as well and if you guys want to see my opinions on the point guard shooting guard 
uh, lockdown power forward as well. Feel free to let me know. I would definitely be down to do them, but obviously if, if we do get to them, I'm going to do the main positions first. So we'll probably segue over to like point guard next, then lockdown. And if you guys are really messing with this series of seeing the what, what my opinions are on the best build for each position for comp pro am, I'm down to keep showing them between the shooting guard and power forwards even as well. So feel free to let me know, leave it in the feedback or leave the, leave your feedback in the comments, I should say. But anyway, besides that, appreciate y'all watching. None of that, titties, man. Peace.